Hello, hello, hello. Hi, guys. So, um, let's go over some practice problems that I've uh, taken out of the test bank for chapter 7. Um, these quantitative problems, it's always good to get a little extra practice in, a little repetition, never hurt. So, here's some background information for these problems. The Harris State Bank has $2,000 in total assets, all of which are earning assets, so they're earning some type of yield. $500 of which will be repriced in the next 90 days. So that means $1,500 of the $2,000 uh, longer term before, they, uh, before the yield changes on them, and $500 will be repriced in the next 90 days. The bank also has $1,600 in total liabilities. So $2,000 minus $1,600, they have $400 in owner's equity. A thousand of the sixteen hundred will be repriced in ninety days. The bank currently earns nine percent on its assets and pays four percent on its liabilities. So the spread is nine percent minus four percent, five percentage points. Okay. Question number one. If interest rates do not change in the next 90 days, what is this bank's net interest income? So question number one, NII equals, and the formula is the dollar interest earned on assets This thing squeak, it sounds like a mouse is in the house minus the dollar interest paid on liabilities. So, this is 0 .09 times 2,000, which is $180 minus 0 0.04 times 1,600, which is equal to $64. And so, let me get out of the way so you can see this, net interest income is equal to 180 minus 64, which is $116. you to bring in a card, put the formulas on your card. Question number two. If interest rates do not change in the next 90 days, what is this bank's net interest margin? NIM equals NII net interest income divided by total assets. equals 116 divided by 2,000, which is 5.8%. Okay? Question number three. What is the dollar interest-sensitive gap of this bank? So the dollar ISG equals the dollar amount of interest-sensitive assets minus the dollar amount of interest-sensitive liabilities. is equal to $500 
minus a thousand dollars equals a negative five hundred dollars. Negative five hundred dollars. So it's liability sensitive. number four. If interest rates on assets and liabilities rise by 2% in the next 90 days, what would be the bank's net interest margin? Okay, so first we'll find the change. So let's find the change in net interest income. Okay, and so that's going to be the percentage point change in market rates times the dollar IS gap and so that's going to equal the 2%.02 .02 times minus $500 equals minus $10. That's the change in the net interest income. Now, the ending NIM is equal to the beginning NII plus or minus the dollar change in NII divided by total assets. assets. Okay? So, that is equal to $116 minus $10 divided by $2,000 equals an ending uh, net interest margin of 5.3%. Okay? That's your ending net interest margin. All right. I'm going to erase all this. Make sure you got it in your memory banks written down. Let's move on to question five. In the school stuff, I love it. I'm a nerd. Are you? I hope so. All right, question five. If you're not a nerd, then go away. Get out of my sight. I got no use for you. Question number five. If interest rates on both assets and liabilities rise by 2% in the next 90 days, what should happen to this bank's net interest margin? So let's see. All right, so now what we're looking at is the change in net interest margin. We're not looking for not the ending net interest margin. We're looking for the change in net interest margin. Okay, and the chain change in net interest margin is equal to the dollar change 
and net interest income divided by total assets. Okay? So we calculated the change in NII to be minus ten dollars and uh, assets two thousand and so that is a minus 0.5% change in the net interest margin. Okay? So the net interest margin started out at 5.8% and ended up at 5.3%. Here's the change. Okay? Question number six. So get the formulas into your, onto your card. If interest rates on both assets and liabilities fall by 2%, what would be the bank's net interest margin? Fall. Okay. So, once again, the NIM is going to be equal to $116 plus a $10 increase equals $126 divided by $2,000 equals 6.3 percent. Yes. All right. Now, uh, question seven. If interest rates on both assets and liabilities fall by 2 percent, what should happen to the bank's net interest margin? The change in NIM is equal to, we can use this, the 6.3% minus the beginning NIM of 5.8%, and we get a plus 0.5%. That's a different way of doing it. If we know the beginning NIM, and the ending NIM, then we can find the change. Okay? Question eight, the last question. The Texas State National Bank has $1,000 in assets with an average duration of five years. The bank has $800 in liabilities with an average duration of 6.25 years. Okay? So what is the duration gap of this bank. So the duration gap is 5 minus 6.25 equals minus 1.25. That's the duration gap. Okay. What is the um, leverage adjusted gap? And the leverage adjusted gap is the duration of the asset portfolio, let's call it that, DAP, DAP, duration of the asset portfolio, minus the duration of the liability portfolio, DLP, DLP, times total, times total liabilities, divided by total assets. Boy, that's a, isn't that a formula? Okay. Equals 5, the duration of the asset portfolio, 5, minus 6.25 times 800 divided by 1,000 
equals 5 minus 5 equals 0. There is no duration gap. Leverage adjusted. Okay? So we're good to go. Is that right? Let me stare at that for a minute. Yep, that's right. So we have that, that, that is correct. Okay, we're good to go. So um, put those formulas on your card and be ready uh, for the test on, I don't know, I think Tuesday or Wednesday. All right, peace out. Shalom.